we're going to run through a graphical approach to dynamic modeling. In this case, we have an input. Okay, so an input is coming into our system. We have our system, and then an output comes out, and this system is dynamic. So the inputs, uh, they take, uh, they, they act immediately, but then the response uh, takes some time to reach a new steady state. So we may have a change, a step input, but then a dynamic for the output. Now in this case, we're going to have a valve that's going to feed into a gravity drain tank. Okay, so the valve is going to be up top, and it's actually going to be a series of two gravity drain tanks. And then the thing that we're going to try to monitor is the level um, on the second tank. Okay, so that's going to be the level on our output. Now the thing that we want to generate uh, in order to be able to describe dynamically how this level changes with changes in the valve, we're going to use three time three constants. We're going to use Kp, and that's going to be our gain. Okay, and that's going to be the delta output uh, divided by the delta input. So in this case, it's going to be the change in the level um, at, over the change in the valve. Okay, and this is going to be at steady state. Okay, so after a long period of time, when you have a change, uh, you're going to look at the change before and after and look at the deltas. The next thing that we're going to use um, is going to be the uh, time constant. Okay, so this is a time constant. Now this is essentially how fast it gets to the new steady state. Okay, so that's going to be a time constant on how fast, and that's actually going to be 63.2 percent. The time to get 63.2 percent uh, of the way uh, to steady state. Okay, and then the final thing that we're going to have, and this is an apparent dead time. Okay, so we're going to use a first order uh, system, and this is a dead time that, um, you know, is when you move the valve, when, uh, so let's say you started moving the valve uh, here, and that's about how long it took for it to start responding. So that is the dead time. Okay, so that is, uh, this is the amount of time to start responding to the change. Okay, so with just these three, we can model many, many dynamic systems. So I'm going to switch over now just to the case study, and we're going to do the gravity drain tank in this case. Okay, so you can see it start uh, to change here, and I'm going to go ahead and just click Save. Now it's going to put it into a data file, and I'm going to uh, go ahead and just do every ninth point just for the fitting. Okay, so I'm going to start off with 70%. Now as I, as I change this, as I, as I close this, you're going to see the level drop because there's going to be less fluid flowing in. So I'm going to go down to 55%. And you can see an immediate change right here in the valve and the level took just a little bit longer. Okay, now I'm going to do down to 40%. Okay, and then you can see a change as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop saving and click pause. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select the plot as well. Okay, you can also print it. I'm just going to use my snipping tool in Windows. It's a very useful utility for just grabbing part of the screen capture. Okay, and uh, I'm going to come right here and just grab this window. And then we'll bring it down into our notebook so that we can do some graphical fitting. Okay, so I have, um, let me just make this just a little bit bigger here. Okay, so I had my change in my valve. Okay, so this was my valve here. And then this up top was my level. Okay, so I had the first change was negative 15% on the valve. And then I had a change here uh, it's kind of hard to see. Let's just say this starts at 4 and uh, ends at, um, let's just say 2.5, just for an approximation. So we had a negative, uh, let's see, that's going to be a negative 1.5 level change for a 15% change in the 
uh, valve position. Okay, so let's first of all just go ahead and compute our gain. Our Kp is going to be the delta output. Now this is the level divided by the delta input. So that's going to be negative 15. Um, actually, that's going to be negative 1.5 divided by negative 15. Okay, so that's going to be equal to 0 0.1 for the gain. Okay, so that's the first thing that we needed. Now the next thing that we ought to compute is the apparent dead time. Okay, so that's when the change started and that, that's when you start to see a change in the response. So the next thing is going to be the dead time and I'm just going to say that's, that's going to be very small, maybe 0 0.2 seconds. Okay, now the third thing that we need is the time constant. Now the time constant is the amount of time to get to 63% of the way to the final steady state value. So if I just multiply this by 0 0.632, um, that's approximately, that's just a little bit less than negative one. Okay, so I look to see where it started, and it's gonna be negative one right around three, okay, about right here, and then uh, this, was the dead time and then this amount of time is going to be the time constant after the dead time okay so um, the dead time let's just say you know from here to here that's uh, going to be about um, you know about three seconds okay so we have uh, a gain of 0 0.1 a uh, time constant of 3 and then a apparent dead time of 0 0.2. So I'm gonna go back into the software and just use an optimization technique, a fitting technique, um, like a sum of squared errors, minimize the sum of squared errors uh, to fit these as well, okay? So let's just see how we did with our graphical fitting. So I'm gonna come over here to design tools, okay? You can switch back and forth, you know, to process or design. And with the design tools, you basically just follow the menu across. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to open my data that I had saved. And you can see my time, my manipulated variable, process variable, and set point is really irrelevant in this case. I'm just going to click OK. It labeled them correctly, but if you bring in other data, you may have to edit it. Okay, now I'm going to go with select my model. I'm just going to use a first order plus dead time and click done. Now what I want to do is start fitting my model. Okay, so my model came up, um, you know, that's the, that is the yellow line, and I had a gain of 0 0.0979. Okay, so we had here uh, 0 0.1, and then I'm gonna put the uh, optimized uh, fit. Okay, so this is using a computer to do the fit instead of the graphical method, 0 0.1. Okay, so we essentially got uh, right on with that. Um, a time constant of 1.16. Okay, so 1.16 seconds. And then a dead time. So it fit a dead time of 0 0.5. Okay, so we got fairly close. This was the graphical method, okay, uh, for fitting. And with the graphical method, just in review, we first of all fit our gain, and then we fit our dead time, and then uh, we fit our time constant, okay. And then we can also use optimization methods to fit as well. Okay, so this was um, the uh, homework assignment that was question um, question 3.1 in the Practical Process Control textbook. Um, if you don't have this software, you can also uh, come here to the Process Control uh, course, and then if you click on Schedule, okay, and then we're going to go to uh, we are doing this uh, homework assignment here, 3.1. You can also download this worksheet with some of the plots that were printed out from this. 
Okay, so uh, for more assignments and uh, practice examples, uh, come to the Process Control website and uh, check out our latest uh, developments.